Welcome everybody back to the Jayhawks Dynasty. It is the long-awaited return. I've had a very long time off from this series, but today we are getting back into the groove of things. As we left off, this team was on a massive win streak. The Jayhawks are definitely way past bowl contention, but today another big milestone is on the line. Today we fight for our place in the Big 12 championship game against the Texas Tech Red Raiders as we head down to the field here in Kansas and the Jayhawks will get the ball first in this game second and nine is where we will pick up as it's intercepted and what a way to return back to the series this one's returned all the way back past the 40 by the cornerback and instead of a amazing outcome at the beginning of the game the Red Raiders will get a shot to ruin our return. Donovan Smith will take off on the right side. He stiff arms a man, breaking more tackles. And after 24 yards, he'll get brought down. And the Red Raiders are cooking now. Third and six, though, on the same drive. Smith wants to throw again. Instead, he runs again. Missed tackle, missed another one, and he's in the end zone. And just like that, before I could even finish my introduction, the Jayhawks defense gives up another touchdown or their first touchdown of the day. We have not had a great return, but today here we are starting back on offense on the right foot. Trevor Cardell for 26 yards. Now Butler will give it to Neal on the left side, and he's got some good blocking and enough to get him about nine yards on the play. We'll pick back up on a second and one. Going to go back to Neal up the middle. This one's a nice gain. Six yards on the play there, but unfortunately he could not break the pylon. So instead we go to a first and goal. Butler wants to throw. No one's open on the play action. Instead he takes off and he is going to get there. They call it a touchdown waiting on a signal, but Maurice Butler is able to get over the goal line. And he's maybe just a yard shy or a yard over it before he's brought down on the next Red Raiders possession, though they do get a nice seven-yard run by Ishad Clayton there. What a nice running back he's been for the Red Raiders this season, even though they're not doing as good as they had been in the past. This time, Smith is sacked. Donovan Smith, he had all kinds of time in the backfield, but instead he tried to run just a little too late on the blind side and they bring him down for a loss of five now third and 15 no one's open again smith fires at the last second and caldwell is just a few milliseconds too late to get smith down to the ground and instead it is a punt on fourth down now the jayhawks get the ball back after that disappointing start to the day he's going deep down field and it's dropped Oh man, Morris Butler is launching that one perfectly to Lawrence Arnold, but man, that was a terrible drop. Second and 10 now, Butler takes the safe option here with Harris and his speed gets him 12 yards on the edge and that is just an exciting player to watch. If I had to choose one electrifying player on this roster as Sean Johnson gets the nice curl route for 12 yards, but if I had to choose one player to watch for the future, Donnell Harris is the most electrifying and fastest player on this offense. On second and 10, you will see him 17 yards. He's able to get the slant route and into the end zone. The Jayhawks strike two times in a row. Now second and 10, Smith hit at the last second. It's intercepted. John Quay Lewis to the 15-10-5 touchdown. No way that just happened. John Quay Lewis picks it up essentially off the ground. They would review it, but thankfully the Jayhawks were able to get them to stand on the field. So third and 12 on the next Red Raiders possession. He will go outside again, and that is another drop. For this offense, the Jayhawks have an opportunity here to take a three touchdown lead. Second and five, Butler wants to throw a slant pass again. This time it is Johnson coming off of the left side and he is going to get 15 yards. So we continue on down the field. First and 10, go back to Neal up the middle. Nobody's there. Touchdown. Diving into the end zone is our senior running back, Devin Neal. Unfortunately, this will be his last home game of the season or and his career so Devin Neal needs to show out today. Second and seven, 28-7 is your score as Jed Castles 10 yards as he barrels over people. And it's still the first half. The Red Raiders have a lot of time to get back into this one. And I would not count them out. 458 remaining in the second quarter. Smith panicking and finally tripped up. He kind of got smushed there in between his own linemen. But instead, it is a third and 12. He could have got rid of it, but he was not able to get up and out of the out of the pocket. 
So instead, on third and 12, he fires to Burns, who does break a few tackles, about five tackles. But finally, Krishan Alexander is able to get back in there and tackle him. Now, second and inches. We are going to go to Neal on a stretch to the left side, cutting back in. Will they be able to catch him? 15, 10, 5, and they barely bring him down at about the four-yard line. Second and goal. Butler wants to throw. Fires to a wide-open man. And the Jayhawks will continue to dominate. 35-7 is the score. Donovan Smith gets sacked. Seven-yard loss on the play, and that one was a massive hit. That might have just taken all the morale out of this Red Raider offense as we go to a third and 19 with a shot. Clayton, nowhere to go. Actually, a gain of nothing on the play. So the Jayhawks have 43 seconds to score now. Third and one, they're going to give it to Neal. Who else would they give it to up the middle? 11 yards and a first down again for the Jayhawks. Continuing that drive now with 38 seconds left. Butler fires outside. Touchdown. And this one is just embarrassing. We'll go into halftime up 42-7. to And the Jayhawks continue their dominance. Will they be able to continue it again as Donovan Smith looked like his neg or his leg got snapped? And he is fine on the next play. So apparently he didn't get injured. On a third and 10, Clayton gets the screen, breaks a tackle. But it is still not enough. Six yards on the play now. Third and two. Butler under center. 508 and counting. He wants to fire outside to Cardell. And while he does catch it and run up field, 10 yards is the first down. Third and eight on the Jayhawks possession again. 417 now. Just kind of milking the clock away. You don't want to come off as running up the score in games like this, especially in a game that you've won and you have no other stakes in outside of losing. So instead, they settle for the short field goal. 45-7 is where the score stands now. Um, almost got Caleb Taylor jumping off sides. Donovan Smith trying to bounce back, but instead he's got a little pressure on the right side. And Dotson is going to get there. Jaron Branley with 15 yards. So now a first and 10 with 334 remaining. Donovan Smith out of the shotgun looking to throw again. Nowhere to go. Instead, he runs, able to get a few yards, but he fumbles it. And it is recovered. Who else would it be? Krishan Brown. What an amazing, amazing heads-up play there. And now the Jayhawks have officially pulled all the starters out and Willie Allen, the future star of this offense, gets an 18-yard run right off the bat. Fourth and one, Pesek Hickson slow on the right side, doesn't get there. They tried to go for it on a fourth and one. Amari Pesek Hickson was just too slow and instead the Jayhawks go back to defense, but Man, Ashad Clayton has not seen any daylight today. The Jayhawks defense has been smothering all over the place. Third and 33 on the next Jayhawks possession. They might just get it as Majik Rector gets lit up at the end of the play. But instead, it is another fourth down attempt here as we fire on the slant. And who else? Donnell Harris, 11 yards. Later on that same drive, the score is still 45-7. We haven't seen much action in this second half. The Jayhawks' defense continues to be strong, but with the bench in, the offense hasn't been as, you know, as powerful and as lightning quick as they would expect to be. But on a first and 10, Larry Johnson fires, and he is intercepted by Barnes. But he is going to go back at about the one-yard line. So it looks like it's going to be a very, very close call. They don't call it a safety but the Red Raiders have to get out of the end zone. First and 10. They want to throw under pressure. No one's open. Keeping the ball for way too long. And he falls down. Donovan Smith would end up getting the safety there. And the Jayhawks get the ball right back again. First and 10 now. 47-7. Johnson get, trying to redeem himself after that interception. And Lauren Bullock, another promising young receiver on this roster we have about five freshman receivers right now on roster we have maybe one or two upperclassmen and that's a sophomore and a junior so we really have nothing to build with as Majik Rector a nice catch in traffic he is that junior I just spoke about but instead we'll finish the drive off with Willie Allen a one yard scamper up the middle and now it is third and five Donovan Smith on the next Raiders possession just launches that out of bounds he has had himself a very, very difficult day. 12 of 22 for about 100 yards and an interception. Nothing crazy, but nothing 
bad or good either it's just kind of been an okay day for donovan smith he did had the one turnover but at the end of the day he's protected the ball fairly well for being sacked as much as he had and willie allen trying to make some late game magic happen 30 yards up the left side but it is 45 seconds remaining the jayhawks are up 54 7 johnson still firing the rector who makes another impressive catch and look out for him next year folks as he is a massive massive veteran presence for this offense as you can see Devin Neal in his final home game dominated this one with 156 yards from scrimmage and one touchdown the Jayhawks win it 60 to 7 the Red Raiders never really stood a chance an excellent standout performance by every player on this team as Maurice Butler leads the Jayhawks to another win on this impressive season and welcome back to the series i know this episode has been a long time coming it's been about two months since i've made anything about the jayhawks but i finally decided today that i felt like you know really commentating one of these videos it just can be such a draining process to do it in the voice that i do it in but it's fun for me to make and it's entertaining as you can see we have the stats from the game before us laughter in kansas is correct this game was a very very big game for us and we came out and played like it despite the one interception to start the day Maurice Butler had himself an excellent day 15 of 18 almost 200 yards 179 three touchdowns one interception Larry Johnson did okay in that last quarter there Devin Neal sayonara senior unfortunately we can't get him back but man has he been amazing this season 21 for 149 and a touchdown willie allen 11 for 86 and a touchdown himself maurice butler also had the one rushing touchdown we saw a receiving wise man this room has so much potential going into next season i'm i just can't wait to see how they do next year but we've still got a few games left to do this year so hopefully we can pull out and we can do a good job with these next few weeks and maybe next year they can be even better this Jayhawks team has definitely surprised me after losing how much veteran or how many veterans we did coming into this season so maybe next year will be even better Nate Smith led the league or led the team in tackles with five a few sacks all around the board Keenan Caldwell had three um, Dotson and Singleton had one Trey Staley with one um, Cameron Dabney with one Cam, um, Cameron Taylor with one as well and I believe that was it so yeah we did have a really really good game but next week next episode I do plan to bring this back as a weekly thing we are going to be facing off against our in-state rival Kansas State for the what third time in a row that first season was kind of messed up because we didn't actually we for whatever reason they weren't on our schedule uh, maybe with my custom conferences it messed up allowing them to be on our schedule but next week we are going to be facing off against the Wildcats and what could be a do or die game this season we can either finish and make the Big 12 championship or lose and miss out on the Big 12 championship anyways guys thank you for joining me back in this series make sure to check out my second channel that I just made um, it's somewhere that I'm just going to post occasional videos such as other games or um, random stuff that I just don't think fits the genre of this channel, which, you know, is sports, basketball, football, stuff like that. So thank you guys for joining me back in this series. I hope you are as excited about it as I am. As always, if you did enjoy this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week in Kansas State. Peace.